This program is now a continuation of a look at from our Lewis dot diagram into what determines the shape of a molecule. I'm going to start with by sharing with you a, a sketch of what the scientists at least believe the aspirin molecule looks like. You'll see sections of it are flat, sections of it resemble small triangles, other sections like this one here appear to come out of the page. What's the theory that lies behind this orientation and shape of our molecule? Well, that theory is called the Vesper theory. That Vesper theory is based upon the idea that only the valence shell electrons are involved. That's why we've been practicing Lewis dot diagrams, because they only involve those that are in the valence shell. Here is a Lewis dot diagram for a molecule that we've drawn a bit earlier. This here is our what we called the nitrate molecule. And we should, of course, put little square brackets around that. Now, we're only interested in the valence electrons, hence these diagrams, when they're drawn, only use the valence electrons. Now, electrons act in pairs, that's why you see a lot of them paired together, and sometimes those pairs will act in groups. Let me show you an example of what I mean by that. So here we have an electron pair, here we have an electron group, and here we have an electron pair. We call these collectively under one term, we call them electron domains. So this particular molecule has three electron domains around the nitrogen. These domains repel each other. That's what this statement says. So these three regions are going to try to push themselves apart as far as possible. If they did that, they would take up this shape, thereby getting as far away from each other as possible. This shape is called trigonal planar. And we would expect that the angle between these lobes, or these domains, would probably be somewhere around 120 degrees. This isn't the only shape that can take up. There are some other common shapes, so I'm going to start by sort of introducing a few of those right now. Sometimes you'll find four domains around that central atom. Four domains make a three-dimensional shape, which we refer to as a tetrahedral. And tetrahedrals tend to have angles somewhere around 109.5 degrees. Another common shape that you'll come across is where you have two regions around the central atom. Let's see if I can bring one of those over. This we refer to as a linear shape. In a linear shape, we have angles between our regions of 180 degrees. So that's what's meant by this statement number three, that the electrons repel each other, and they will then take on these particular orientations. Lastly, we come up with a concept that lone pair repel more than bonded pair. Let's take a look at what's meant by that idea. Here I have a picture of the a molecule with four electron domains, and two of those domains are bonded to other atoms shown here. We refer to this as a bonded domain, and we refer to these that aren't connected to atoms as lone domains. It turns out that these lone domains are capable of repelling more, so they can push down a little bit harder on these bonded domains and cause this angle to be somewhat distorted or changed from, in this case, the traditional 109. Let's look at a few examples of how to put this theory into place. I'm going to begin with methane. And down below here, I've given you the total number of electrons that are present in the methane molecule. I'm going to begin by putting the electrons into my picture. There's eight of them, and I start off at the bonding sites. Here we see a situation where we have four electron domains. Four electron domains suggest we form a tetrahedral shape. So I'll put carbon in the middle, up, 
coming out the side. This is supposed to be a, a wedge coming out of the plane of the paper and this one going back in. So this is how our electron domains will arrange themselves, as far apart from each other as possible in a tetrahedral-like shape. Now it turns out that every single one of these domains has a hydrogen hooked onto it. So as a result, I end up with this shape, a tetrahedral itself, with bond angles of 109 between everything. This sequence of working out the diagrams I'm going to follow in all of my examples. A Lewis dot diagram, an idea of how the electron domains arrange themselves, and finally the shape of my molecule. All right. All right, let's take a look at ammonia. It also has eight electrons. So again, I'll start by putting them at the bonding sites. I still have two left, so I'll put them out here. So this would be an example of a substance with a lone pair of electrons. Now the shape that this will form with four regions around it will be very similar to what we saw before. Nitrogen will have a tetrahedral arrangement for its electron domains. So electron domains there, there, there and there, there and there. Three of these domains are bonded. So we could put hydrogens, let's say, here, here, and here. And as a result, we end up with this shape. And here the lone pair up top. So the electrons are arranged in a tetrahedral, but this molecule is called trigonal pyramidal, or a pyramidal shape. Now our bond angles in a tetrahedral are 109, however the presence of this unbonded pair squeezes down on that 109 degrees. So we end up with something that tends to be less than 109 degrees for our angles in this molecule. Let's take a look at water. Again, the Lewis dot diagram. So we'll start with that picture. Eight electrons. So the first place we put them is our bonding sites. I still have four left over, so I'll give them to that oxygen in the middle. And again, we have four regions. So that oxygen will have an orientation of its electron domains, also in a tetrahedral-like shape. However, this molecule will have two unbonded pairs and two pairs that are bonded. This shape is called a bent or V-shape. Again, we have a distortion of the angle because of these lone pairs that can push down on that angle. And again, we have a situation where we would expect the bond angles to be less than 109 degrees. Ozone has the formula O3. Again, we'll quickly do the Lewis dot diagram for 18 electrons. We'll put two there, two there. Complete the octets of everybody on the outside. I've used up 16 electrons. I have two left. I give them to the atom in the center. Now, in this particular case, that oxygen in the center isn't quite satisfied, so I'm going to move two electrons in to satisfy that. So a look at this indicates we have three electron regions, or three electron domains. You might recall that forms a, a, a flat triangle, trigonal planar. So the oxygen in the middle, 120 degrees between our items, and I'll put a, two lines here to kind of represent that bond. And we have our electrons located as such. Now it turns out that two of these regions are bonded, say it's this one and this one. This also leads to a bent shape of our molecule. Now as far as our bond angles are concerned, 
we would expect 120 in a flat triangle. However, this unbonded pair up top repels a little bit more, and as a result, we tend to get bond, bond angles that are less than 120 degrees. And here's the last example I want to take a look at, carbon dioxide. So again, we'll quickly do the Lewis dot diagram with 16 electrons in the picture, bonding sites, complete the outside The carbon in the center is short four electrons, so I'm going to move two pairs in to help that out. So I'm going to remove that pair and that pair, and let's bring them up into here. Now this substance has two bonding regions. I've got a bonding region there, or I should say two electron domains, and an electron domain there. So two electron domains would suggest I'm going to form a linear shape. So carbon it's going to have essentially two domains around it. There's four electrons in that domain and four electrons in that particular domain. It's going to make a linear shape. Both of these ends are hooked up to other atoms, and so it would tend to form the linear shape that we associate with the carbon dioxide molecule. So to finish, a little summary, always begin with a Lewis dot diagram to understand how many electron domains you have around your central atom. Once you have knowledge of those numbers of electron domains, think about how those domains are going to get as far away from each other as possible and the angles they would have. And finally, think about some of those pairs of electrons or domains being bonded and some of those domains not being bonded and how that will affect and distort our angle or the shape of our molecule. So you need to go through thinking about all three processes to be able to come up with the correct shape. Thanks for watching.